Hi, my name is Sean Walker and I'm a Principal Emerging Practice Architect here at ServiceNow. Today I'm going to be talking to you about SaaS software usage. So what is software usage? So software usage uh, provides you information about who's using a software product, when the software product was last used, or maybe how many times the software product has been accessed in a given period, or it can also tell you the total time a software product has been used over that period. Uh, most software usage information can be found in the SAMP software usage table, um, but there are some other places that you can find some, some usage information, specifically around the SaaS products, and that's what I'm gonna be showing you in today's video. So why is software usage information important? And that's really because unused or underutilized software can be really expensive for organizations. So that license harvesting is the process that, you know, we call it to remove those unused products so that organizations can reduce their spend or reduce the amount of licenses that they have to use. Um, the tools within ServiceNow that do that are the reclamation rules and the removal candidates and you can use those to kind of harvest back those licenses. Um, and software usage data is used by those reclamation rules to really determine if that removal candidate should be created. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna jump into a Yokohama release of ServiceNow and show you where to find some of that usage data rather than going through it in more slides. Okay, so I've logged into a Yokohama instance of ServiceNow and navigated to the Software Asset Management Workspace. So the first thing I want to show you is just some of the SaaS integrations that we have set up and some of the usage information. So first thing I want to do is go to License Operations. And under here, we're going to scroll down into the User Subscription section. And I can see here, if I click the Direct Integration Profiles, I do have a couple of published profiles in this particular instance. I have uh, no demo data, I have some, some test integrations going on, but no actual demo data in here, so I can show you real data, so there won't be very much of it. So the first thing I can show you is that SAMP usage table I talked about in the presentation. And this is where most of the software usage is gonna go. So whether it's on-premise or some of your SaaS-based uh, product will write here as well. So you can see here that because of the uh, Microsoft 365 um, integration, I do have some, some software usage information that's come in through this particular into this particular table so we can see here we've got the products right so all the different high level products for microsoft we've got here and we've got the user principal name so that's the name of the subscription that was assigned um, and all those are all in here and then what user is it mapping to so these are all demo users so they're not actually mapping to my into to my users in service now um, but you can see i've set up a couple of users here that are mapping to myself and we can see here some of the last usage dates. So this was last used on the 12th, this was last used on the 20th, and the reclamation type is based off last use date. So again, this is where you're gonna find a lot of your software usage information. And again, even your on-premise stuff will write to this same table. So this is the first place I would go to look for software usage. So the next place I would start looking for usage information is actually right into the user subscription table. So if I come down here under user subscriptions, click on user subscriptions, this is gonna be a list of all the software subscriptions that are coming in through my various integrations. So we can see these are all coming in. We've got a couple of different integrations here, the 365 integration, the pager duty integration, etc. Um, and this has some usage information that you could use to make those decisions. So if we take a look, we can actually customize or personalize our list here. And there's a couple of columns I find very, very useful, um, which would be um, last activity is a good date. This is a date the last, now again, these values aren't always populated depending on the SAS integration, but a lot of them do have data in that last activity date. And there's also another one too you can use that I sometimes use is the subscription assigned, which is another date field that you can see. Um, so I'm just gonna move those up here a little bit um, so that we can see them a little bit better. And we're gonna click apply and refresh. And now we can see here this last activity date. 
So we can see here that on the PagerDuty integration that I accessed the last time was on the 28th of, of March. And here is some subscriptions that were assigned information on the, um, on the 365 integration. So you notice not all of them have, like, you know, the PagerDuty doesn't have the subscription assigned. It all depends on the SaaS integrator, but it does have the last activity um, the Microsoft one also does have last activity, so these are test users, so they really haven't accessed the system much where I can see some of the last activity here for my testing account as well as the subscription assigned account. And I can come over here and see, oh, there is one more for the box integration, right? It does have that last activity and that subscription assigned date. So there's again some values that you can use to help make your decisions about SaaS products. Now the reclamation rules that are set up will automatically look at the different values mostly from the, SAT, the software usage table. So the next place you can go to look for software usage for SaaS integrations is this other one called SaaS feature usage. So this is an additional subflow that's run on some of the SaaS integrations, which pulls back very specific SaaS feature usage. And again, not all SaaS integrations are going to have data in here. Like you'll notice there's nothing in here really for the Microsoft integration because it's not tracking it at that level. But the box integration and pager duty integration, and I know some of the Zoom integrations do provide you some additional information, which helps you make some decisions as well too, and helps you optimize your subscription. So we can see here, like for example, on the box integration, you know, there's been uploads and files, downloaded files, renamed files, etc. So there's been a lot of activity tracked here on the box integration. And there's also been stuff happening on the pager duty integration where it's tracking. So sometimes, you know, you might have different subscription levels for different types of products that have different features. And so this will help you look and analyze whether you should be giving these users all the features or not and see what they're actually doing within their subscriptions. Okay, so the next thing I want to show you is very specific to Microsoft. Um, and unfortunately, I haven't been able to find a, a menu for it specifically, but there's one way you can get to it, or as long as you know the table, you can create up a, a, create a list for it. But if you come over to the success portal and you look at the product success, uh, sorry, the product setups, you will see this Microsoft 365. Now, hopefully you've all run through this um, particular guided setup. If not, I would recommend just going through and seeing if you've done all the items in the particular guided setup. But the one step I wanted to show you, and it's very specific to usage information, is this verify the pull of all required software usage. And again, it's got some very useful links in here. Um, this will take you to the software usage table, which I showed you earlier. This will take you to the subscription table I showed you earlier. But there's also a new table that's been added specifically for the 365 apps. And that's the Microsoft 365 app usage reports. Um, so I can click on that and it's going to be bring me to this, you know, SAMP um, M365 app usage table. And what this is going to show me is this shows me specific application usage and on who's using what, when and how, etc. So you can see here we've got one note on the Windows environment, we've got one note on the web environment or just one note in general. And so this is usage information that's going to be captured from on the Microsoft portal. So if you're in the Microsoft portal, you can see some of those usage reports on the Microsoft 365 portal, and it will be tracking some of this information. Um, so again, this is a demo instance. I don't have a lot. I do have some, if I click into my particular testing account that I've been using, I can see I've got some web activity, I've got some Outlook activity, and I've got some um, web activity. And I believe the last usage is based off of the most recent last usage. Now, the uh, one thing I do wanna stress on this, it is not real-time data. It does take a while for this data to funnel its way into ServiceNow um, once it becomes available on the 365 portal. So it's not always there on the 365 portal. So let me just quickly pause the video and I'll jump over to the portal and show you what I'm looking at over on the other side. Okay, so now I've logged into the um, Microsoft 365 Admin Center. And if I come down here under 
reports, I can see some of the usage reports. So this is where some of the usage data is going to be coming from um, within your instance. So you can see a lot of information here, like in terms of your active users, uh, active activities, that's email, etc. cetera, um, you know, uh, OneDrive stuff, etc. But you can also see um, here under the 365 apps, this is the usage data that I was talking about um, that gets imported and takes a little while to come down and populate that SAMP 365 usage um, yeah, information in ServiceNow. Now again, it does take a long time to update. It is uh, the end of March right now and the last active date I have in here is March 17th. So there's definitely, um, the data is not real time within here. So therefore it's not going to be real time within um, ServiceNow. So in this video, we reviewed what software usage is, why software usage is important, then I took you through a demo of the software usage table, um, the user subscription table, and showed you that last activity field and the subscription assigned field. Then I went into the SAS feature usage table and showed you some of that data. And then finally, we took a look at the new Microsoft 365 app usage report table and the data that's available within there. So for more information on some of these subjects, there's some really good um, information on the ServiceNow Docs site. So you can go to this QR code, which is Reclaiming User Subscriptions. And this is a really handy um, report because it tells you specifically, or sorry, a document, because it tells you specifically what some of those SaaS integrations are going to do and some of the data that it's going to bring in or what's going to happen, for example, on the reclamation flow. So I really like this particular doc and I recommend taking a look at that one. Um, there's also more specific information on ServiceNow docs for viewing and creating software usage. You can create software usage manually. So um, that'll talk you about how to create it manually. There's also the other Ask a Ranger video, which is understanding that software usage data. And that's gonna be a bit more about the on-premise software installations. So I recommend watching that video. And then there's also a really good community article that was written, which is ServiceNow SAM Pro Determination of Last Activity Date for 365. That's some really good information about how that last activity date is calculated. So I hope you found this video useful and I'll talk to you in the next one.